Good Saturday morning, everybody. I want to bring you an update on Maria. It is still a major category three hurricane. It's just east of Nassau, Bahamas, about 340 miles east of Nassau. It will continue to move off to the north northwest at about nine miles per hour. That's where it is right now, but it will continue to move to the north and northwest and weaken as it does. It's going to move over some cooler water, so we'll talk about that in a little bit. Don't pay so much attention to that red center line that you see there because this storm can shift anywhere within this cone. It can shift a little bit farther offshore closer to Bermuda, which will mean lesser effects for us, or it could shift a little bit closer uh, to the coastline, which would mean greater effects for us. It is expected to weaken to a category one hurricane by Wednesday and Thursday morning and then eventually curving out to sea. I want to show you the computer models here because all the models pretty much in good agreement that it will track to the north and north west and then eventually to the north and east by Friday. Now, how far this storm gets to the coastline? Again, that's where the models differ just a little bit. You'll notice a couple of models take it a little bit farther off the coastline. We've got this one pink model here that takes it a little bit closer to the coastline. So that's going to be the big factor in Maria. And when we talk about where this storm will track, this is a pretty neat graphic here. So here's where the storm is currently situated if it stays on that center line. But again, you don't want to pay a lot of attention to that center line because if it shifts a little bit farther west, closer to Bermuda, notice here we are, there's Norfolk, we'll have a lesser effect on our area. So just some clouds, maybe a little bit of rain, but if it shifts a farther to the west, closer to us, the winds will pick up, we will have more rain, rough surf, things of that nature. So again, that's why we're going to be watching the track of Maria very, very closely as we push through the next several days. Now, we talked about water temperatures a little bit, but I want to get a little bit deeper into it. So with the water temperature, temperatures, hurricanes need very warm water. We'll say water temperatures 80 degrees or so and above to really sustain and to grow. Temperatures down, water temperatures down near uh, the Turks and Caicos Islands. You'll notice how uh, that shade is a little bit lighter, but where Maria is sitting right now, the water temperatures are actually very warm. However, it will track farther to the north and northwest. And notice these shades are lighter. So we're talking water temperatures in the low 80s. And these are actually the waters, the cooler waters that Jose left behind. So Jose did leave behind some cooler waters here and that's known as what's called upwelling. So whenever you have a really strong hurricane, it turns up the waters and it actually allows the warmer surface water to be replaced by cooler water from beneath it. So again, uh, Maria will track over these cooler waters and because of that, it is expected to weaken. Let's talk about the winds in terms of our probability of tropical storm force winds. So we'll take this into Wednesday into early Thursday. Thursday morning. As of right now, it looks like the greater threat for a tropical storm force winds will be along the outer bank. So we're talking Cape Hatteras in that area. And you'll notice hurricane force winds farther offshore. As we push a little bit farther to the north and west, then the percentage drops off, which you would expect since it's farther away from the storm. So again, if the storm shifts a little bit farther to the coast, then these shades, this, these numbers will go up. If it shifts a little bit farther to the west, these numbers will go down. So that's why we're watching the track very closely. So as of now, I'm going to step off the screen. As of now, here's the thinking. The greatest impact with Maria will be the tides. So the tides will be a little bit higher than normal. Also, the winds will be picking up, especially Wednesday into Thursday. That's when Maria will be just off of our coastline. In terms of any heavy rain or tornadoes, not really expecting a big impact uh, with Maria with those two categories. Now let's talk about what's steering Maria because hurricanes are steered. So they're steered by upper level winds or the jet stream in, in some cases. So we have high pressure over the Atlantic. So it's riding right along the uh, outer fringe of high pressure. Okay, so it will track to the north and northwest. However, However, we're watching a trough, a pretty deep trough that's well off to our west, and that's basically a dip in the jet stream. That will help to carry Maria uh, out to the north and east as we push into Friday. So basically out over land as we push into Friday. You'll notice that here, here we are Thursday. By Friday, Maria gets caught up in the jet stream and we'll move out to sea. But again, we're watching how close Maria comes to the coastline, which will have a big impact on our weather. Now, the forecast, the NOAA forecast, five to nine hurricanes, 
two to five major. We're looking pretty good so far. So far this year, and when I say pretty good, I mean compared to the forecast. So far, seven hurricanes and four major hurricanes. When we talk about major hurricanes, we're talking category three, fours, and five. So I'm gonna step off the screen here. Harvey was a major hurricane, a category five. Irma, a category four, excuse me. Irma was a major hurricane, a category five. Jose was a major hurricane as well, a category four. And then we have Maria, a category three. Now Katia, Gert, also Franklin, they were hurricanes, but they were on the lower in so a one and a two for both Gert and Katia. So again, we're going to continue to watch things very closely. We'll bring you more updates. You can follow me on Facebook at Aisha Scott, also on Twitter, 13 Aisha Scott.